G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in on the south side of the map, we've got Lee Nock in the blue trunks playing as the Abbasid Dynasty. His opponent who spawns on the north side of the map in the color red. Who have we got up here, Litacore? We got the one and only striker playing as the red French out here. A player with a very badass name, if I may say so, is the type of guy that you can just introduce like, and we got the striker. Striker. As he's opening with that second scout. <laughs> yeah, it's good to see the second scout getting out of the map. Uh, this is seeming to be the very standard build uh, that's coming in, especially on these open maps. Uh, on the other side of the map, we see that Lenok is doing the exact same thing. So despite the difference in language, we have no difference when it comes to openings between these two players. Not at all. Looking at the base of Striker over here, he's got a gold mine at the back, which is immensely valuable for the French. And it's also a gold mine that could be walled off using those forests. So it's a very well defendable base over here for Striker. And nothing to be ashamed of either for Lenok. He's got the berries very safe. Having that safe is just one of the key elements of Abbasid gameplay because if we look at the patch notes, if we look at the developer notes in the last patch that was released, one of the key things that the devs said that is that they wanted to make the Delhi and the Abbasids prioritize the berries over the sheep, something that they accomplished by boosting the berry gather rate. Yeah, yet still we see that, uh, I mean, he's definitely going for that, but I just want to take a look at that base that uh, Striker's got. That is an absolutely gorgeous base. So yeah, as, as you mentioned, very easy for him to wall that off. I wouldn't be surprised if we do see a wall come in across here uh, at the back. It's just so easy for him to do that. And then by the same token, up towards the northern position on that other flank, it's easy for him to wall in. He's going to have access to that gold mine, the stone mine that's there as well. Um, so if he wants to do that, he's going to be able to do it. But uh, I mean, it, it's a beautiful base that he's going to have uh, today. Indeed, it's a very beautiful base for both players. The biggest problem for Lenok is that both of his forests are up front, so it's a little more difficult to defend. But aside from that, it's a beautiful base. Also worth noting the berry spots for Lenok. He's got a pretty decent second berry spot to the left of his base. That's also a key factor for mm. the Abbasids because they want to rely on those berries as long as possible. The third berry patch, not so great though. A little exposed up front over here, as we indeed have just a very standard Dark Age opening from both of these players. Striker sending villagers to Wood is a sign that he wants to go for a second production building though, which is likely going to be an archer range to accompany the knights from the School of Cavalry. Yeah, smart moves coming out from him. Now, one of the things that you mentioned was that second berry patch, but have a look here. It's uh, it, There's a huge amount of deer down uh, towards this position over here for Lee Nock. He's going to be absolutely happy when he finds this out. So this is just basically a, a food bonanza over here. I mean, it is, it is brunch time for him. Uh, he's going to be eating all of that up. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see a second TC getting plopped down right over there. But uh, he's now going to be clicking up to the next stage, going up with the economic wing. No real surprise there, Ludacore. I don't think I've ever seen any player ever uh, go for any other wing, except for one. And it was actually Striker. It was on Black Forest. It was a game against me. Uh, I was going to do a Chinese Palace Guard rush. And he just did Camel Archers. Uh, and he went for the military wing first. And he beat me. Yeah, I think in the early days we had players experimenting with the military wing. I remember Taro in the early days trying to go for that and just use that camel support. So mm -hmm. have like one Camel Archer and just supporting the archers. And it actually worked quite nicely. The biggest thing here is that while camel support is a good upgrade, fresh foodstuffs is an exceptional upgrade. So there are better alternatives than any other wing. So the economy wing is always going to be the most effective, no matter what you do in feudal. Yeah, I got to agree with you 100%. Uh, economic wing is just one of those wings. I mean, it, it just becomes such a staple for the civilization. And I think it might be a... a I don't know, maybe it's a good idea to throw out, you know, I've been, I've been talking about this a fair bit. If, if people aren't taking those other options, well, maybe we should make them a little bit more attractive so that they actually do it. You know, things like if, if you're playing or like preservation of knowledge, maybe make it so that your first technology is free and every other technology 30% off. Then you could do things like, you know, straight, you know, age up with the culture wing and then go straight into double broad axe or something like that. Who knows? There are lots of different things that you could do to make that a little bit more spicy. Absolutely. The culture ring would be your second best option probably going into Feudal Age. But as you said, the economy wing is just so powerful over here. One of the things that I would really look forward to for a future of Age of Empires 4 though, is Red Bull sponsoring an Abbasid only tournament so they can say that Red Bull gives you wings. God, let it go. What are we going to do with you? <laughs> It's just going to be Abbasid mirrors, and there's just going to be... Every, everyone... The rules are... 
that you must play Abyssin, you must go to age four, and you must build all four wings of the House of Wisdom. Yeah, I worked so hard for that joke. Now, we got the... <laughs> that, you've, you've had that one in the this. back pocket. You, you you wrote that one down on Tuesday, like, oh, this is going to be a good one. No, no, no. I made it up like two <laughs> seconds ago, and I was like, okay, let's hope that Ozzy is going to speak for five more seconds so I have the time to polish this joke and deliver it in an appropriate way. Now, speaking of delivery, there is going to be a villager that will be delivered to hell up north. Striker could lose that villager to the scout of Lenok. Yeah, it does look like or he... Or will he? He almost lost it. That scout managing to get taken out of the last second. Good little pickup there. But on the other side of the map, I think that uh, Striker might be eyeing off some potential attack himself. Lenok sitting, waiting. That Spearman in wait. Going to be coming out now and fighting off his enemy. But keep in mind, that is what French is all about. They want to get in up and close and personal with that villager. Does the villager go down? It manages to get inside the town center. Lenok going to be very happy with this early effort as he uh, pushes back with the Royal Knight. But keep in mind, this is where the advantage comes. Typically, you don't want to be making spears against France if you're playing as the French, because there's much more effective units that counter these knights. That's the knight. Speaking of being effective, Striker is losing that knight over there. That's a massive casualty. That was almost a full HP knight that just got slaughtered by the spearman. Definitely not a loss that he wanted to take. Yeah, I think he must have been distracted at the same time in his own base. There's the uh, the scout coming out from Lee Nock just being annoying. And I think that that's probably was just distracting him. And typically when you've got these alarms that go off in your ears, you kind of begin to blur them out once there's like two or three of them happening at the same time. And I think that might have been the case. So it's those small little things. But you mentioned earlier that we would potentially see a double or a, uh, a range coming out. And that is indeed going to be the case. Uh, but uh, keep in mind, he's also going for professional scouts here as well. Ooh, like the professional scouts met as a knight charges in here for striker. Lenok is a little slow to react. And that is going to be one villager taken down here on the stone mine. Slowly but surely, Striker is carving out an advantage because, as you said, with professional scouts, he's going to have a great food eco, and also he's starting to kill villagers from the other party. Yeah, but speaking of uh, villagers being killed, it looks like a scout almost going down in the middle of the map. He manages to bring back that carcass. That deer is going to be very uh, nicely carved out as well, just like that lead that Striker was building. But speaking of Striker, I mean, I'm a little bit curious to know what you think his transition is going to be here because obviously he knows that he's going up against the Abbasid. Highly likely that he's going to be going for a double TC. He's scouted the stone coming out for uh, for his opponent. So how do you think he's going to play this when we enter into the transitional period? This is a difficult matchup for him because uh, the two TCs will pay off really fast for the Abbasids given that they can build it because that's not something that Lenok was able to accomplish so far. Another villager went down on that stone mine. So I think the first benchmark point for him is to delay that town center as much as possible because the problem with the French is that they take a lot of time to get to castle because their army is very expensive. So I think your transitional period will first consist of just trying to pick off villagers left and right with your knights and just try to delay that eco build up as much as possible and try to carve out a reasonable castle age for yourself and avoid falling behind in that regard. Speaking of uh, of falling behind, it looks like this uh, this knight coming in going to be able to try and pick up that villager. I'm not sure if you saw that. He manages to take it out before the villager goes down. That was absolutely beautiful timing right there from Lenox. So a huge mistake from Striker. For anybody wondering what was the mistake that just happened from Striker, he charged his cavalry or his, he charged his knight onto the villager. And that is a big mistake because it allows the spearman to intercept the knight and prevent it from attacking you. Saw so it was sitting still. It was rooted in place. It couldn't do anything. But speaking of rooted, it looks like a villager unfortunately going to be going down it has indeed been completely stuffed. Um, but uh, yeah, huge mistake coming out there from uh, Striker and uh, getting punished pretty severely by Lee Nock. Indeed, he has been throwing away some key knights over there and those knights are really important for him. Luckily, he's getting some sort of return value for them. He's killing villagers and given the fact that he's training villagers faster with the French, he currently has 35 villagers against 28 and that's exactly the position that he wants to be in. In fact, he's adding a second stable. So... The plan is clear. He just wants to keep these raids up and just try to minimize the amount of villagers that Lino can pump out and stay safe with. 
Yeah, I think that the question is going to be as to how he looks to finish this game. When you are on one town center playing up against two, you're on a timer. And you know that. And so that means that, you know, typically if you are playing against the one town, or if you've got the one town center, you're going to have a very uh, straight line going up. Whereas the two town center, the villagers are going to be coming out a lot faster. So you have to sort of identify where is it that you're going to be looking to attack. And that's normally around maybe the 15 to 18 minute mark. And as to how you do that, I mean, you can do it in the second age, you can do it in the third age. We've seen games where people look to do it typically with the Mongols in the Third Age or with the Abbasid in the Third Age, but for the French, it seems to be in the Second Age. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see an all-out attack coming out from Stryker here in the Feudal Age. He is harassing the gold miners for sure, and he missed out on the opportunity to hit the berry villagers on the left side. He didn't have a scout accompanying those knights, and because of that, he wasn't able to see those villagers out there. But he's still doing a lot of pressure on Linox's base, also cutting him off from gold, which will delay Castle Age quite a bit for Linox. Yeah, now one of the things to note is, I, I would actually say Lenok is misplaying this. I don't think he's respecting the French uh, raids enough here. Uh, and what do I mean by that? I mean the fact that he's got a whole bunch of villagers out here just sitting by this mill. There's no outpost out here. Now, granted, he does have those spears, but ideally, he'd love to have those spears in the base. He's lost a lot of villagers up until this point. If we take a look at the village account, he's sitting on 36 at the moment. Where is his opponent, Striker? Currently sits on 40. So he's got a four villager lead despite having only one town center and that is a massive problem especially with those archers coming in because knights and archers especially in such such large, large numbers it's going to be difficult to hold off with just spears and horsemen there is a counter-attack coming in from Lenok with those horsemen but the base of striker is well defendable we talked about the possibility of walling this off so it's going to be difficult for Lenok to do damage whereas for striker this is the perfect time to strike <laughs> Oh gosh, what are we gonna do with you, little core? We're gonna have to take you back to the uh, take you back to the orphanage and get a new one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Lenok now un under significant threat. Uh, the these knights are seriously uh, I I creating a, a huge amount of trouble. So right now he's pushing in towards the town center. Uh, <laughs> I'm just looking at my chat right now. Someone said two dad jokes. <laughs> Oh gosh, I think they uh, I think they like us, Lidicor. I think they like us. Uh, well, they were gonna have to get used to us because this could be a long set over here. Not so much as the life length of these villagers on the left side. Finally, Striker finds them, and they're just wide open for killing. As you said, Lino didn't really respect the possibility of those French raids coming in, and now he's going to pay the price. And that's exactly it. When it comes to these villages, I mean, and, and these French raids, you can't just work on the, the, the idea or the hope that you're going to be able to rescue these villages. You have to, you have to, have to, have to keep nearby uh, safety for them. You need to have an outpost, you need to have a town center, there needs to be something there uh, that is going to enable them some form of safety. And unfortunately, Lenok doesn't do that. He loses a huge amount of villages, only got five left. I think he had almost double digits out there. Maybe eight, maybe nine villages. So very unfortunate. It minimized the damage though. So it looked a lot scarier than it became. And that is thanks to the spearmen and the horsemen arriving to the battle. But as you said before, Lenok is not in a position villager-wise where he wants to be. He wants to be like double the villagers already, or at least close to that. But in fact, he's behind in villagers compared to his opponent. At like 13, 14 minutes with the Abbasids, you're looking into like a 60 to 40 villager count, ideally. And that's not the case here at all. Yeah, he's really behind where he wants to be with the villager count. I think another thing that probably hasn't happened for Lenok is he hasn't had enough walls going up. So we do continue to see these raids throughout the game that are just hitting his wood line, hitting his berries, hitting his gold mine, hitting his stone mine as well. Uh, so if we could have seen some walls, and I guess that also comes down to the fact that when it comes to his map, it wasn't the best spawn. If you were to flip these two players around, if you were to take Abbasid, put them on the north side, you'd have a beautiful spawn coming out here for them, and it would have been a very easy case to get those two town centers down. But on the south side, it was a little bit harder for him to do that. Lino just had a mastermind move in the middle of the map. He had a scout accompanying the horseman, and he hit his entire force in the stealth forest. He spotted the knights, and he just hid in the stealth forest and waited for the knights to pass. So he wasn't gonna get spotted. One thing he doesn't know is that he was gonna bump into Vos over here, but the idea was great to just avoid encountering those knights entirely. Yeah, that's that's a that's a pretty smart move right there. But speaking of other smart moves, Striker now trying to come in and all those spears almost taking out all of those uh all of those knights, but unfortunately, knights do make it away. 
Uh, Linok now heading up to the next age, uh, going up with the culture wing. No real surprise there. It's a very, very standard uh, age three um, wing that you would go up with. A couple of knights now up towards the north also going to be picking up these horsemen. Uh, so that raid is going to be going unaffected at the same time. Horse or uh, knights going down towards the south as well uh, and looking to harass Linok. So Linok under significant pressure here. And he's coming in with the pressure from the north as well. The spearmen are mispositioned, and once again, a striker will be able to get a couple of villager kills over here. In fact, that's going to be quite a few. That's the second villager going down over here. Now the knights will probably have to disengage against all those spearmen. And on the other side, those horsemen were unable to do anything, basically. They're just being pursued by the knights. Striker had a pretty decent resource bank for a long time, but he's just now going up to the castle age with the guild hall. Whereas on the other side, castle age is almost finished already for Linok. Yeah, I think you really start to see the difference between the horseman and the knight in a matchup like this, especially where you've got Leenok who is actively trying to raid because you you start to see how useless the horseman is when it comes to this kind of stuff. The knight comes in, one tap, two tap, everybody's dead. The horseman comes in, one stab, two stab, three stab, and like you've fallen asleep because you've been stabbed so many times, but you wake up after four hours because the horseman's still stabbing you because you're still not bloody dead because you're only being stabbed by a horseman and not a knight. And that's like where the real difference comes in. Now, speaking of something being stabbed, that's a lot of spearmen moving forward. The Abbasids, not needing to research the technology for siege weapons, they can start making mangonels on the battlefield against all those archers. Archer numbers are looking decent for Striker, but he could be in a difficult spot trying to hold off those Castle Age forces. Question is, are we going to see a couple of knights also added by Lenok? The answer so far is no. Maybe even a camel. What do you think about that? Yeah, camel could definitely work. Uh, I'm really loving what we're seeing out of Lenok. As long as he gets through the veteran spearmen as quickly as possible, which he hasn't actually done yet. Uh, so hopefully we see that coming through soon. Um... I'm trying to see why does it say I'm hovering over Lenok and his barracks is just saying no other upgrade. Oh, he doesn't have the gold for it. Um, yeah, so I, I ideally needs to be getting those hardened spearmen, but I, I think he could actually win this game right here. This is an incredibly strong death push. Uh, the main thing... Oh, he's actually already got veteran spearmen coming in. I don't know why that was bugged. Uh, but uh, yeah, Lenok... If, if it says no other upgrades, it means that you are researching it on a different building. Um, so he was doing that on the barracks close to his wood line out there. And as you said, now with the veteran spears, this is a tough hold for Striker. Yeah, I think Lenok wins this. I don't think Striker can stop it. Uh, this is the power of the Abbasid timing right here. Here. So despite losing out a huge uh, amount of villagers uh, in the early game, he still managed uh, to keep it ahead. Villagers, oh my lord, he manages to get them inside the town center. I'm not sure if you saw that. The villagers sitting on the front line here. There was a deer carcass that was being gathered up by about 10 villagers. They all managed to make it inside alive. But this is a beautiful timing coming in from Lee Nock. And what's really difficult right here is that Striker is unable to contest this siege mass. Simply because the Siege Workshop, it's going to take time for it to come up. It's going to take time to get those units out. You really, like, to match this, you're going to need two Siege Workshops at least. And that's 500 wood. Actually, I think it's 600 wood. Give me a second here, Litacore. That's 600 wood. That's a lot of wood. And a lot of gold to get some spring golds going. And look at the gold income of Striker. There is none. He ran out of gold behind this town center, and he's just now readjusting his villagers. He doesn't have gold, and he's running out at the worst possible moment because he's getting outnumbered very heavily here, and he has no answer to the siege. Yeah, that's exactly it. I wouldn't be surprised if we start to see a few battering rams coming in. One of the big mistakes you can make here is in a push like this is not bringing in a battering ram. The battering ram is going to be able to soak up that town center fire. It's going to force the issue as well. If your opponent doesn't respond to you, you will be able to, to clean them up with that. But we see Leenok posturing towards the west of the base now looking for an angle to come in not really finding anything at the moment got a thousand wood stacked up there obviously very cognizant of a flank as well uh we did see up towards the north those uh those royal knights moving around they do just for the moment seem to be sitting by just just minding their own business they do have the veteran upgrade and there is an option to just sally out on the left side and this could give a nice window to striker to potentially jump on those siege weapons remember the night attack against siege weapons got buffed in the previous patch, so it is actually possible to jump on those mangonels, and once you have the mangonels done, you could use your archers. The striker is also massing a lot of scouts here as the cheap torch unit. He just wants to burn down those siege weapons before he engages with the archers. Yeah, interestingly, Leenok is not attacking from the south villagers. position. Oh my lord, that the was a lot of villagers. The town center, that's at least six. That is a huge amount of villages that just went down. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to inspect their bodies. We can see on the inside of the town center, there appears to be at least two people that have gone down, three on the outside at least. 
It ain't pretty. Gout's moving to the right side, Knights from the left side. Linok doesn't have a ton of vision on this though, so this could come as a very nasty surprise, having attacked from three directions, and here it comes. Scouts on the way towards those mangonels. Knights as well. Yeah, this is going to be a tough hold right now. Leenok under significant threat. We've got a beautiful surround coming in for Striker. You can see Leenok beginning to scatter his forces. It's almost like he's somewhat unprepared as the mangonels continue to fire out on the infantry. Scouts going to be able to come through, be able to sacrifice themselves and look to pick up these mangonels on the front line. The first one almost going down. No villagers getting pulled at this point in time. Also got the knights now coming in over from the north side. Not going to have a lot of luck. All of the mangonels do manage to make it out alive and you can see he's done a very good job of protecting it and it looks like striker are going to tap out lee knock victorious in this first game of the n4c qualifying final what a fight over here really this just came down to the micro between these two players and striker pulled everything he had he waited for his scout numbers to rise and he knew exactly he needed to take down those mangonels and Linux unit control was just exceptional there he was able to keep those spears distributed between the left and the right evenly so he holds off the scouts and the knights at the same time and no matter how hard tr striker tried it was impossible for him to snipe the mangonels and free mangonels is not something that you can juke against with your archers and ultimately Striker just lost most of his army. The final dip in the military count represents the quality of that fight and how good it was for Lenok. Yeah, it was a very, very beautiful fight. I, to me, it almost looked like Striker thought he was going to be able to move in with his scouts and be able to kill the siege. And as a result, he didn't bring his knights in right until the end. But at that point, it was already too late because he failed to kill the siege. That's what it kind of looked like to me. It was a bit of hesitation that was going on there, it seemed. So he didn't commit, he didn't commit completely. And I think that that's come back to haunt him. I'd love to know from his perspective whether that was the case, but I'm sure we'll find out eventually. But uh, Litical, pretty good game one. Thanks for the cast. I'm going to sign out for YouTube. So fellas on YouTube, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. We'll catch you guys in game number two. Game number two, rather. It's coming right up.